Intel supposedly locked out non-K Intel Skylake CPU overclocking thanks to numerous Windows and BIOS updates. Much of that, however, never manifested. I still have builds with non-K overclocking UEFIs that are on the latest Windows updates. The microcode rumor was just that, only a rumor. So what does this mean? Can we still overclock non-K Intel Skylake CPUs? Four months ago, the answer was still yes. I verified it right here. And today, the answer is still yes. So the Overkill i3 PC build that Destin and I worked on a few videos ago will be our guinea pig today. Last time it was the Pentium G4400. If you're interested in the specs of this one, click right here. Otherwise, let's get to some base clock overclocking. All you need is a Z170 motherboard and any consumer grade Skylake processor, so any Pentium, i3, i5, or i7 non-K SKU. Two other things to note are, one, CPU temperatures will be nearly impossible to monitor after the new BIOS is flashed. There are a few programs that work around this linked in the description. And two, your iGPU, or your integrated graphics, will be disabled as long as this non-K overclocking BIOS is flashed. But don't worry if at any point you aren't willing to make these trade-offs any longer, you can always flash a newer BIOS. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Just make sure it's the correct BIOS. So here we go. First, navigate to the motherboard BIOS link in this video's description. Select the motherboard brand you're currently sporting and then click on the exact motherboard name. Refer to your box if you're not 100% sure. Mine was the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 3 motherboard. Select download and save the zip folder to a USB drive. From there, simply extract the folder. That's it. With the drive still inserted into your PC, reset the computer and press delete or the corresponding key to push you into your BIOS. From here, find either a tab that says Q Flash or BIOS Update. After clicking this option, select the drive you wish to boot from, navigate to your newly extracted BIOS file, and execute. At this point, do not turn off your PC. Let the bar reach 100%, at which point your computer will reset itself. If your PC's power is cut off at any point during the update process, it's very likely that you end up with a massive motherboard paperweight. You'll either need a replacement board or a replacement UEFI chip. Either way, this is a painstaking process, so be sure to allow this process to finish unhindered. Next, restart your computer and enter your BIOS once again. It may look different, or it may look exactly the same. Either way, if it was flashed successfully, we should now be able to raise our base clock frequency freely. Navigate over to CPU configuration, and at this point, begin raising your base clock value in increments that correspond to CPU voltage, appropriate CPU voltage, until you end up with a satisfied frequency. Do keep in mind that raising the base clock frequency will also increase RAM frequency, so reconfigure this after the fact or your PC will likely not boot. For a more detailed CPU overclocking guide in general, click right here. Otherwise, let's restart our PC and verify that the overclock did in fact stick. And boom, there it is, 4.4 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. <laughs> Fairly confident that I could do better with the voltage, but this is just a quick demonstration. Our jump in Cinebench from 3.7 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz is nearly 100 CB, an almost 25% CPU performance increase thanks to the now possible base clock overclock. Just make sure you've got a beefy enough cooler to back up the overclock. I do not recommend doing this with the stock Intel cooler. It's just not going to dissipate enough heat. You'll end up with a really hot system or a really loud system or even worse, both. My core temps in Cinebench alone jumped from 44 degrees Celsius to 76, and I'm sporting a 280 millimeter Kraken X61, so just some perspective there. If you like this video and or are thoroughly intrigued by the fact that you can still overclock non-K Intel Skylake SKUs, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you're Intel, because I'm sure Intel hates me at this point, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for interesting DRAM tests. This time around, I'm going to start testing 4 gigs of RAM tomorrow, then 8 gigs, then 12 gigs, then 16 gigabytes of uh, system RAM, see how that affects in-game performance. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.